Hey everyone, in today's video, I have spoken about lupus. I have tried to make it very simple, so I really hope you like it. We will also be solving questions so that you get a better understanding. And even if you test it on this topic later, you will be able to answer it very quickly since we've already done it together. So without any delay, let's get to it. Question number one. SLE is a kind of type dash hypersensitivity. Option A, type 2. Option B, type 3. Option C, both. Option D, none. The answer to this question is both. SLE is an autoimmune disease in which antibodies attack different organs of our body. The antibodies either affect the organs directly, which is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, or form immune complexes and get deposited on organs and damage them. This is an example of type 3 hypersensitivity. Although the pathogenesis of lupus majorly involves type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, a very small bit of organ damage can also take place by the direct attack of antibodies on the organs. Question number 2. Which of the following is the least dangerous in lupus? Option A, kidney involvement. Option B, heart involvement. Option C, lung involvement. Lupus can cause nephritis and membranous nephropathy in the kidney. In the heart, there could be lemon sacs endocarditis. This is unique as vegetations can be seen on either sides of the heart valves. Pericarditis can also be seen in the heart. Patients also experience atherosclerosis. Arthritis is also a feature of lupus. The central nervous system effects of lupus include seizures and neuropsychiatric changes. Skin rash and pleuritis are also features of SLE. Besides, patients might also have hair loss and oral ulcers. Out of all these, the major cause of death in lupus is due to kidney involvement, cardiovascular involvement, and infections. So, the least dangerous among the options that I have given in the question is lung involvement. Which of the following antibody tests can be used to rule lupus out? Option A, anti-nuclear antibody. Option B, anti-double-stranded DNA antibody. Option C, anti-Smith antibody. Option D, anti-histone antibody. The correct answer to this question is anti-nuclear antibody. These are the antibodies majorly involved in lupus. Remember that if a test is highly sensitive, it can help us rule a disease out. On the other hand, tests with high specificity are used to rule diseases in. If you find sensitivity and specificity confusing, make sure to check my video on the basics of biostatistics. Coming back to our question, we are asked what can be used to rule lupus out. So basically, in this question, they're asking us which of the following tests is sensitive for lupus. Anti-nuclear antibodies are highly sensitive for lupus. This means that if 10 people have lupus, almost all of them will have anti-nuclear antibodies. However, anti-nuclear antibodies are not specific to lupus since people with other conditions can also have a positive anti-nuclear antibody test. Which of the following can be used as a confirmatory test for SLE? Option A, anti-nuclear antibody. Option B, anti-DSDNA antibody. Option C, anti-histone antibody. The correct answer is anti-DSDNA antibody. Confirmatory tests have to be highly specific. Anti-DSDNA antibody and anti-Smith antibodies are highly specific for lupus. This implies that if these antibodies are found in a person, there is an extremely high chance of them to have lupus. These antibodies are not found in other conditions. Note that not all patients with lupus will have these antibodies, hence it's not very sensitive. Antihistone antibodies indicate drug-induced lupus. Here are some of the drugs that can cause lupus. Which antibody is specific for renal involvement in SLE? 
option A, anti-nuclear antibody, option B, anti-DSDNA antibody, option C, anti-Smith antibody, option D, anti-histone antibody. The correct answer is anti-DSDNA antibody. In SLE, the rash usually spares which of the following areas? Option A, palms and soles. Option B, nasolabial folds. Option C, the rash can occur anywhere. The correct answer is nasolabial folds. In patients with SLE, this particular portion of the face will not have a rash. This gives it the characteristic butterfly appearance. This is also known as malar rash. In pregnant women with SLE, which antibody can potentially cause neonatal lupus? Option A, anti-DSDNA antibody. Option B, anti-RO antibody. Option C, anti-LA antibody. The answer to this question is anti-RO antibody. Anti-RO antibody is also known as anti-SSA antibody. This antibody can potentially cause the placenta and attack the fetus. Hence, pregnant women with lupus with an increased level of this antibody increase the risk of their baby to have neonatal lupus. Neonatal lupus is characterized by heart block, rash and cytopenias. What do you think is the reason why there is low complement in people with SLE? Do let me know what you think in the comments. Also, do you know which of the following can increase the risk of digoxin toxicity and why? I have explained it in this video. It also has many questions on electrolytes. I'm sure you'll love it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.